We're here at the Panasonic stand, EFA 2015, and I'm joined by Ron Martin from Panasonic to talk a bit more detail about their new CZ950 OLED television. Ron, hi. Hi, Steve. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, so this is a very impressive new TV. Um, perhaps you want to talk a little bit more detail about how it was developed, um, what yeah. makes this so special, why it's better than the other OLEDs on the market. Okay. Uh, well, we're very proud of this. We're very happy with the results that have come along so far. Uh, you know, when, when I talk about uh, displays and televisions now, I, I, I kind of make distinctions between what I call a, a regular TV, a good TV, and a precise TV. What we've been able to achieve on this OLED is precision. So we take the basic panel, which uh, has certain characteristics to it, and then we apply the electronics behind it that drive that panel. In that process, we want to know where all the deficiencies in the panel are itself so that we can control them with our electronics. When we bring in a colorist or a cinematographer like, like Mike brings to the table in this relationship, he adds that extra level of precision for us so that we can actually get his creative vision as, as he's under the control of the cinematographer. In a sense, we're under his control and we're going to tweak those electronics in that panel to bring that vision all the way through to the end product. So, for example, with, a, with, an, with an OLED, we have this remarkable ability to make black, true black, for the first time. But just as we come out of black, we know where the panel has issues. Maybe it's issues in the corners of the flat field. Maybe it's just the accuracy of the black levels as they come up. As it gets brighter through the mid-tones into the whites, we know how it handles colors and where it doesn't handle colors. And again, with our electronics, we can now tune that to a level of precision that we just haven't been able to achieve before. So essentially, in the case of a cinematographer or a director who's on the scene uh, of the set, you know, making their vision and capturing it on the camera, there's a professional monitor on that set that they're looking at and reviewing and basically saying, yes, this matches my vision. Now we can take that vision all the way down to the consumer on a, on a large scale display like this that allows us to have that, that accuracy, that precision, and assure the consumer that he's actually seeing exactly what that director or cinematographer envisioned on the set when they were capturing it. Yeah, I mean, we appreciate that obviously you're using a third-party panel. There have been reports of issues on another manufacturer's panel mm -hmm. in terms of uh, banding just above black and also uh, yep. dark. Is, and the edges. you think you've eliminated those problems on this television? Yeah, we have absolute control over them. That's the that, that's whole point of what we've done with our Studio Pro technologies is, uh, uh, again, know where the deficiencies are, address them, uh, and, and make them conform to where we want them to perform, and pass that on to the consumer in the, in the visual experience. We're approaching a period now where the standards have changed for television, or are about to change television, mm -hmm. so we're, re we're entering a world now of things like 10-bit panels, um, HDR, yeah. wider color spaces. So does yeah. this uh, TV meet all those new standards? It, it, it does, particularly in the signaling. And then again, because we have such precision in our, in our control of the panel, we can accomplish things that heretofore we just have not been able to do. And so particularly with those black levels, in that 10-bit, you know, banding in the past and in, 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 in typical distribution, uh, the, the banding on sunsets and cloud scenes, you know, those foggy scenes, uh, this has just been a huge barrier for us. Now, we, because we have 10 bits, because we have the sophisticated signaling, we can actually get beyond those things and you just don't notice them anymore. And very much <laughs> anymore when they are, they're actually in the signal itself that's been captured and we can't do anything about that because again, we're just maintaining creative intent. So uh, uh, it, it's all about the evolving, the evolving scenario of, of how we manufacture these TVs with greater control and precision along the way. Obviously, you mentioned color accuracy, that's very important. Um, currently, the standard is REC 709. Mm -hmm. It looks like the standard will move to something wider, probably DCI or P3. Right. Will this television be able to reach DCI? Yes, kind of yes, yes. We're, we're, we're very close to DCI now. There's a few things that we're going to tweak along the way to ensure that. And again, what this will mean, uh, and when we say DCI, we're talking about a projection standard. It's not a formal color space. It's a projection standard that, that the cinema industry uses for theatrical presentation. Uh, but that's what the creative uh, sits with a colorist like Mike and, and, and creates in the edit bay, uh, in the coloring bay. And now uh, televisions can have that same color space, the same response, and that presentation will carry through from the theatrical experience to the home video experience, again, for the first time uh, in our careers. And this you is actually a, think you'll be able to 
experience what you see at the cinema effectively what, at yep, home. Absolutely, absolutely. In, in a more controlled environment. You know, cinemas, uh, uh, as exciting as they are, you still get a lot of splashback. You know, the screen's so big, the light hits the viewer, hits the seats, and back, splashes back on the, on the screen and contaminates it. In a panel like this, you don't have that problem. So if your environment is even reasonable in your home, you're actually seeing something that the cinematographer has created and probably won't even see in the typical theatrical venue. I appreciate that since it's a third party panel, you don't necessarily have a choice, but do you have any particular opinion on the fact that it's curved as opposed to flat? You know, uh, uh, this is such a mild curve. Uh, uh, at, at first, when the, when the curve uh, phenomena came out in televisions, I didn't like it, mainly because uh, the, the, the panels themselves are not uniform. But because this is a glass panel, the uniformity is very smooth and with a much milder curve, it actually does knock down some of the glare and the reflections that you get from the environment around you. Uh, when you're sitting and looking at it full few front on, uh, you really don't no notice the curve at all. And as you move around it, again, the reflection seems to be much more under control uh, because of the, the, the flat, smooth glass surface. Uh, and I've, I've actually warmed up to it pretty nicely and, 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 and not alarmed by it like I was originally. So, and Ron, whilst I have you here, perhaps we could talk a little bit about Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray because, I mean, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of talk this year. There's some standards that have been agreed. Yep. Um, there's been talk about it coming out by Christmas. So what's mm -hmm. the latest in terms of UHD 4K Blu-ray? Well, the specification is complete and agreed on by everybody. The license process has begun. And so uh, studios, manufacturers are now into the licensing uh, process for Ultra HD Blu-ray. Uh, the studios are also actively engaged in looking at their content libraries and uh, deciding which, uh, uh, which titles would be deployed in, in this format. Uh, we're still optimistic that uh, we'll have product by end of year and certainly by early uh, first quarter 2016. And then as content begins to deploy into it, I think we'll have some very exciting uh, presentations uh, about what that will look like. Uh, we'll be able to show it and display it uh, in all its glory with the expanded color uh, uh, palette, the 10-bit the, the bit depth and the HDR capabilities. And uh, I think it will really prove itself to be uh, quite a remarkable distribution format. Do you think it'd be easily the best way of watching 4K content in the home? Ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the, the alternate mechanisms for K, 4K delivery are still kind of plagued by uh, infrastructure problems. You know, they still switched resolutions. Uh, they, uh, you know, pushing 10 bits down a, a distribution pipe is still kind of cumbersome for, for many uh, carriers. Uh, Ultra HD Blu-ray is it's that repeatable experience, you know, uh, best quality each time, every time. And that's been our goal from the very beginning with it. I think with any new technology, I mean, it looks impressive in terms of the players, etc. But it's, the key thing is studio support, it's content. Yeah. Are all the studios behind the format? Yeah. Well, the, you know, those that are uh, part of the, the Blu-ray Association have been in this from the beginning. They're the ones that actually drove what we call the Format Extension Task Force and driving the technology forward. Uh, production, you know, it's going to take a, a little while for the production to catch up to this but it's their format and they're the ones that are producing the content for it and they have their roadmaps actively moving forward. Great, Ron, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.